Hey everybody, welcome to Steampunks for another review. I would just like to apologize in advance for my voice. I have a bit of a cold today, so I might sound a little bit more nasally than usual. But anyway, let's get this started. I really enjoy games that give players the tools to do whatever they like with. This is the major attraction behind games like Minecraft, Rust, and even the newest Fallout 4. In all of these, players are able to take the game's assets and arrange them as they please. We've seen some crazy stuff out of Minecraft in the last five years, and we've already started seeing some of the awesome fortress designs that people have made in Fallout 4. The attraction to Simple Planes is along these same lines, but with really no survival mechanics that block you from creating freely. While the game is limited to building various vehicles, as opposed to the entire open sandbox like Rust, Simple Planes still manages to pull me in again and again, in the pursuit of the seemingly simple task of getting your plane to fly. So put down your pickaxes for a while as we take up the noble craft of making airplanes. Simple Planes is very, well, simple. There isn't much to the entire game outside of the plane editor, except for a couple of islands that you can traverse when your creation is completed. When I say you're going to be in the level editor a lot, I mean a lot. It took me about two hours just to learn how to use the editor properly, how to make a plane that didn't look like a box, and how to even get my plane flying. I made quite a few death machines before I even got my first plane in the air. RIP test pilots. If you like using level editors, then this won't be anything new for you. But sitting through hours of a level editor, only to have your plane explode on the runway is not for the faint of heart. That being said, once you do get your creations flying, it is very satisfying to see your plane in the air and you'll pretty much have the basics of flight down for your next creation. There's definitely a learning curve to building these planes. After you build a couple, it'll become very easy for you to slap together some monstrosity and have it in the air in no time. Quickly you will learn that no one design is perfect. They all have pros and cons, biplanes use less fuel than jets allowing them to fly further, but jets have more powerful engines which allow for higher speeds while sacrificing fuel efficiency. Simply the shape of your wings can determine how well your plane flies. The control of the plane is kind of finicky, so while you might think having a plane with a ton of control and handling would be a good thing, you're safer off having a plane that's super heavy and makes slow arcing turns. When you are flying your creation, it is you against the controls. They aren't exactly fluid and the game doesn't do a great job at teaching you how to use them. Your plane is able to adjust roll, pitch, and yaw, and depending on how big the control panel is on each wing, it can drastically change the way that your plane handles. To a beginner pilot, all of these controls can be enough to make you kiss the ground and never want to get in a plane again. There are several things that you can do once you've finished your plane. There are races, combat simulations, time trials, and even demolition missions that have you destroying bridges while evading enemy fire. All of these by themselves aren't that bad, except for the Superman-esque racing sections. Coupled with poor control of some of the planes, however, they're next to impossible. Trying to hit anything with weapons is a chore, and more than anything, just infuriating. The only minigame I had some fun playing was evading the surface-to-air missiles. All you have to do is fly your plane around and evade incoming rockets, which overall was pretty entertaining. Everything else felt though it was impossible, or it was obvious that I would have to build a plane just to complete that one task. You can pretty much look past all of these if you like, there really isn't that much there, and, and it's not like there are more parts or anything that are locked behind their completion. On the whole, the minigames feel like just that, minigames. The main focus of the game is building the planes, and that's where it feels the most fluid. <laughs> There are tons, and I mean tons of downloadable designs that have been uploaded by other players, and most of them are super fun to fly. This is probably the greatest thing about this game, just the ability to build something cool and share it with the rest of the community so easily. If you can't seem to get your plane to fly, or you just want to fly something around that looks crazy, the downloadable vehicle list has something for every type of player. And that's what makes this game so addictive. You want to fly a Star Destroyer? Go for it. You want to drive a car? Have at her. You want to fly a gigantic yellow shark through the sky? You can totally do that with simple planes. Woo! 
At its core, Simple Planes is a plane builder. That's where it shines. Just getting your plane to look exactly the way you want and then having to tweak it to make it fly is a gratifying experience that is hard to find in other games. If you're willing to put the time in to learn how planes fly, then this game will give you more than just a couple hours of fun, and the price is low enough to fit in the most frugal gaming budgets. Ugh. The sky is the limit on what you can build. Whether it works or not is on you. I'm giving Simple Planes a 6.5. Hey, I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave us a like. Maybe think about subscribing to Steampunks. We're a small channel and we can only grow with your help, guys. As always, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, and here's some other content that I think you might enjoy. Until next time, guys, and Merry Christmas.